Welcome to the webinar where I will be showing you how to layer your smart notebook lessons. So in this example I have one object that I can hide under another object. So it's a way to add interactivity to your smart notebook lessons. There are several examples of layering found in the Lesson Activity Toolkit Examples folder. So in your gallery, first you'll need to browse to the Lesson Activity Toolkit folder, and then go to the Example folder, and finally to the folder that says Layering, and you will see eight different examples of layering techniques. Each one of those examples will have a pull tab over to the side and that pull tab will contain an explanation of how they did that layering example and most of them will also have a little star and that will direct you to a video that's online where you can watch a tutorial of how they created that uh, layering example step by step. So I encourage you to become more familiar with layering by playing around with those examples in the example folder. And I'm going to show you a few techniques and also some of the examples from the Lesson Activity Toolkit. The first one that I want to show you is something that's called an Erase and Reveal. Now the secret is to pick a pen color that is the same color as the background color and use that pen to draw or to color over the object that you want to hide. So as you can see in my example here, I have a bear that I've used a white marker to cover to color over part of that bear. So as you pick a pen, remember that you can select the properties of that pen. One of those choices is the color and you'll see there is white in addition to all the other colors on the palette. So once I've colored over that object, then when I use my eraser, I can erase the ink as you see me doing here now to reveal the object that's underneath. So that's a really fun technique for students. There are a couple of examples of this in the Lesson Activity Toolkit. So in this one you can use your eraser to reveal notes. So here's a bulleted list and as I erase you can see the text that's underneath it. So that's just one technique that you can use. You know, this would be a whole lot faster if I picked the bigger eraser. I picked the medium size eraser and that took me a little bit longer to do. One that you should be familiar with is the move and reveal. If you'll recall, we had a flag activity in which you had some flags of different countries and the names of the countries and you were to hide the name of the country underneath the flag so that when the student moved the flag you'd see the answer. So over here I have an example where the Mexican flag moves over the top of the word Mexico but over here the Canadian flag does not. So what I need to do is to change the order of the objects and that will allow me to hide the word Canada under the flag. So if I select the flag and if I select the menu arrow, one of my choices is order. And now I can say bring it to the front. So it's going to be the topmost object. It will even go over the top of the Mexican flag over here because it is on the top layer. So now you can see as I move it, it hides the word Canada. So that's called a move and reveal. Something very similar to this, they call it a layer reveal in the Lesson Activity Toolkit. I have a series of buttons and I have little arrows that say pull. And when I pull that arrow out, you can see that I have a text box and I can type something in that text box and reveal it. Now what they did was they created a box that is the same color as the background and if I tap it it will kind of ruin the surprise but let me just move that box out of the way and you can see where all the other text boxes are they're hidden under the buttons with the numbers on them and part of them also go off the screen so let me move that colored box 
back over and you can see the outline of that box because the numbers are on the top layer they're still visible. The text that I pull out onto the screen is on a layer below that box. So depending on the order that you group your objects you can hide certain elements and other elements can hide those. Another technique is called the click to reveal. So you'll see that I have some math facts here and as I tap on the little box the box disappears. Very easy to do because if you'll recall all objects you have the ability to animate. You have similar options to what you do in PowerPoint. You can make objects fly in or out of the screen and one of the choices you have is to make an object fade when you tap on it. So I'm going to give you an example of that on the next screen. Here's a baseball and when I tap on the baseball it disappears. So here's what I had to do. First of all I select the object whether it's text or a picture or a shape and once I've selected it and it has that border around it, you'll remember I have the menu arrow in the upper right corner. And one of the choices on that menu is properties. When I select the properties of that object, one of my choices that appears says object animation. And if I select the type of animation I want from this drop down list, one of my choices is to fade out when the object is clicked and you'll notice you also have a choice of speed you can make it go slower normal or fast speed now the baseball that I had animated before is no longer there how can I get it back well if I go back out to the previous slide and back into this slider page you'll notice all of my animations have been reset now if I tap the baseball it disappears. Now if I tap this picture it will reappear and if I tap this picture with the properties uh, pane that will also reappear. So that's how you can get out of and back into a page to to redo the animations if you wish. This next one is not one that I'm a big fan of. I think the example is way too complicated. I think this would work very well if you kept it simple but you'll notice that this is kind of a close activity and you have a bunch of words down below and the students are supposed to drag the word to the correct location and I don't even know what these are I'm just kind of dragging them at random but now when I want to reveal the answers in the lower left corner I have a green box and in that box it says drag this to the target to reveal the answer so if I drag that over here to the top of the target it will put all of the answers in for me. Very difficult to set up because this is a number of different objects, text objects that have to be grouped together. So it is possible to make this simpler, but the example that they have listed is one that's very difficult to replicate. Now another method of layering is by doing what's called a color reveal. So this is an example again from the Lesson Activity Toolkit and as I move one of these animals down to the bottom you'll notice that it displays the name of the animal. It's a very simple technique. All you need to do is to group the picture with a text box as you can see here with the bear example. And the text inside the text box is the same color as the background. So you can't see it until you move the text box over the darker background color. So that's called a color reveal. Here's another example. This is a magnifying glass and I have some pop the, the five most populated cities are typed in the same color as that map. So as I move the magnifying glass around because it's a darker color as I pass it beneath the names of those cities, the contrasting colors allows it to be revealed. So I have 
New York, Mexico City, Sao Paulo. There's a number of these all over the map. And again, this is an example from the Lesson Activity Toolkit. So if you decide you want to use the magnifying glass, you can find that magnifying glass inside the gallery if you just do a search for it. You have to set the layer of that magnifying glass uh, to the back so other objects can pass in front of it to be revealed. So step one, you have to select the object, in this case the magnifying glass. Step two, you have to change the order of the object to send it to the back. I'm sorry, <laughs> you have to select the order and then from there step three is to say send it to the back. Here's one more example of a color reveal method. I think it's pretty obvious how they did this one. They have two different text boxes that they've grouped together. The text is in two contrasting colors. One you can see over the dark colored box. The other you can see when you move it to the lighter colored box. And another example is, uh, that I like to call magic paper. As I slide the word over, I can reveal the answer. And one more example. This one I like to call the flashlight. And if you'd like a copy of this, I'd be happy to send it to you. You'll notice that I uh, have a graphic of a flashlight. And actually, I, I drew a, um, a trapezoid, or maybe it was a triangle, and I grouped the two objects together. I also have it set to the back layer so that it passes underneath all these other objects. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn out the light. You have a, a light switch over there. That's going to change my background color to black. You won't be able to see anything except the flashlight. And as I move the flashlight around, it will pass underneath the word flashlight and those different shapes. And they will, in a sense, be illuminated. So let me cut the light. There you can see my flashlight. And as I move it around, there's the word flashlight. Down here are some of my shapes. So it's a really cool effect. I think your students would really enjoy doing something like that. So again, I refer you to the example folder where you can learn from playing around with those different examples. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or problems, feel free to email me. My email address is james.dornberg at monroeisd dot U.S.